And hello, everybody, and welcome to another edition of Gridiron Gab, and here on NFLGridironGab.com. Matt Lodi with you, site editor, and we are joined today by our Seahawks Gab editor, that, of course, being Devin Heinen. Devin, how are you today? I'm doing great. How about you? Good, good. Let's talk a little bit about the Seahawks. Of course, this last week, a loss in Dallas against the Cowboys. They will be at home this Sunday to take on the Detroit Lions, a struggling Lions team at 1-6. and six. Let's talk a little bit about the Cowboys game first. You called it last week. You said this was going to be a difficult game for the team, and it certainly was. Talk about it. Well, it's all about inconsistent play, especially on the offense. The Seahawks came out really strong in the first half, but failed to protect Matt Hasselbeck in the second half of the game. Hasselbeck got sacked twice and uh, hit after a pass one time that left him on the ground for a couple of seconds, so it's really scared offensive coordinator Greg Knapp, head coach Jim Mora, and the rest of the Seattle Seahawks. Now, of course, the Seahawks, uh, you know, still in, a, in an interesting race in the NFC West. The Arizona Cardinals losing this last week, getting uh, upset, if you will, by the Carolina Panthers at home. Seahawks are still in an interesting position, Dev, and if they come out and, you know, put together a three- or four-game winning streak, you would think at this point that they would be able to, you know, get back in this race pretty quickly. Yeah, you know, it's really interesting, their situation. They do have a chance to still be in this, but really they honestly don't because they just have too many injuries right now and too much inconsistent play, especially on the defense. Now, I talked about the inconsistencies in the offense in this Dallas game, but really overall this for a whole year now, it's been defensive inconsistency with a lot of missed tackles that have led to key plays and lots of scoring the drives. Let's talk a little bit about Matt Hasselbeck. You mentioned a couple of stacks a week ago. Talk a little bit about him and then go into a little bit about the running game. The, the team really just, again, right now is not running the football consistently. Talk a little bit about that and where they, where you think this is going to, uh, you know, is going to lead as far as the running game is concerned the rest of the year. Well, first off, you asked about Matt Hasselbeck. You know, he had a good game. He uh, had 249 yards and two touchdowns and no turnovers, which was really important because the Dallas defense had been causing some turnovers and getting a lot of pressure on the quarterback. So Hasselbeck was able to stand in, stand in under pressure and perform pretty well. Now, for the running game, you know, things just haven't, haven't materialized for the running game for the Seattle Seahawks. Julius Jones, 56 yards, 15 carries on a 3.7 average for Week 8 against Dallas, Edwin James and Justin Forsett getting 23 yards combined on seven carries. That's not the kind of performance you expect and you need to have out of a quality running game for an offensive juggernaut that Seattle used to be, especially a couple years ago, Sean Alexander. What this means in the long run is don't be, don't be afraid or don't be excited too much if you see a move coming after the season I do believe that Julius Jones or Edwin James or both of them could be cut and the running backs could be drafted in the first round. In fact, I'd strongly advise it. Yeah, they're definitely going to need to go out there and find somebody that can help carry the rock. All right, let's talk a little bit about the Lions game this week. This is by far uh, the most winnable game the team has had on their schedule for a while. Talk about the game. What concerns you, if anything, about the Lions? Because really right now – you know, they are a team right now that, that really, you know, they're just not playing well. They lost last week at home to the Rams, a team that, you know, really is not a good football team either. Uh, they're going to need to, um, you know, they're going to need to come out and win this game. There's no question. Yeah, you know, the only real concern about the Detroit Lions for the Seattle Seahawks is wide receiver Calvin Johnson. Johnson spent the past two games on the inactive list with an injury, but he might be able to come back this week. Head coach Jim Schwartz of the Lions said that uh, Calvin Johnson was going to play last week, but the last minute scratched him because Johnson just didn't feel ready to go. I think he could be ready to go this week with uh, another week of just recuperation and rejuvenating his injured situation. You know, besides that, there really isn't much to talk about for the Detroit Lions in a positive light. They keep incompleting uh, passes. They keep fumbling. They keep... They can't miss. They can't keep missing key opportunities on offense. They only had one wide receiver catch a ball from Matthew Stafford in the game against the St. Louis Rams in Week Eight, and that came in the fourth quarter. Mm-hmm. That's unbelievable. Again, they they really need to get better as far as that is concerned. So before we let you go, obviously your prediction. Again, the Seahawks at home, the Lions coming in. 
uh, a team, again, that we just mentioned is struggling at 1-6. and six. Where do you go with this game, and, and how do you see it playing out? You know, Seattle's going to win this one because there's not much of a chance they'll lose. However, I kind of want them to lose because as bad as it is, it's time to start thinking on draft picks for Seattle because they're really not going to make the playoffs. But, uh, yeah, they will win. They will win, I will say, by the score of 28-10. to 10. Detroit gets a lone touchdown on a Calvin Johnson touchdown reception if he plays. If he doesn't play, Seattle wins 28-3. All right, there you go. Again, Devin Heinen, our editor at Seahawks Gab. Devin, appreciate the time. As always, my friend, you have a great week, and we will talk to you again soon. Thanks. You too.